What's going on guys? This is Rob, blah, 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 pop culture explained intro. Okay, so WandaVision episode number eight was amazing. Here's the thing about the mid credit scene, doesn't really matter, right? The mid credit scene is a reference to the event in the comics where Vision was basically destroyed and then recreated. So the idea in Marvel comics is that Vision's brain patterns, how he thinks and all that kind of stuff was based off a superhero named Simon Williams. And so that Avenger, ultimately when he died, Vision died shortly after somewhere around that period. And then Vision was rebuilt. But because of the fact that he lost his mental patterns, what you can basically call machine version of amnesia he essentially just popped back up is like a full white version of vision right most likely what's going to happen he's going to go into wanda vision he's going to face off against wanda and whatever it's sword's first time experimenting with like a sentient weapon right that's really all that is so getting to the meat and potatoes of this right let's talk about wanda let's talk about agatha let's talk about the concept of chaos magic what does this mean okay let's explain magic for those of you guys who have seen my agatha harkness explained video on comics explained which exploded last week when that episode ended but that video will make you an expert on agatha harkness in about 15 minutes but if you want the the, the short and gritty of it there's different kinds of magic in Marvel Comics, right? So let's take Agatha's version of magic and then let's take Wanda's version of magic because Wanda's magical ability is for the most part the exact same as Doctor Strange if they do what I think they're going to do. So what you have here are individuals like Agatha who manipulate what's called ambient magical energy. And ambient magical energy is basically just the energy that makes up the universe, right? Now it does not mean that she's equal to like an infinity stone. That's not what that means. All it simply means is that the universe itself permeates with energy and that there are some individuals out there like Doctor Dr. Doom's mom, Cynthia Von Doom, who was able to do it after selling her soul to Mephisto or somebody like Agatha Harkness, they're able to tap into that ambient magical energy and then use it for their own ends. By all standards of measurement, there's no true differentiation between how Agatha uses her powers and how Doctor Strange uses his powers. The only difference is the potency of their spells. The ability for Agatha to manipulate reality on a universal scale doesn't really exist. Doctor Strange, he can't because Agatha cannot manipulate the same kind of magic that Doctor Strange can. What Doctor Strange does and what Wanda do is they basically borrow the powers of others. What Doctor Strange does is he uses the powers of individuals like Sidorak, for example. Sidorak being the guy who made the Juggernaut into the Juggernaut. Those of you guys who are familiar with like the Fox X-Men movies where you saw like Deadpool 2 and you had that huge gargantuan guy walking around with Deadpool, that's Juggernaut, right? Sidorak created a stone, he put it on Earth, and it's called the Crimson Gem of Sidorak. Doctor Strange used the Crimson Bands of Sidorak in Avengers Infinity War when he shot those red ribbons out of himself and then bonded them to Thanos. What Wanda's doing here is manipulating something called chaos magic. Why does this matter? Okay, those of you guys who were circulating around the idea of Wanda being a nexus being, I think you're right, but I think you're right to a degree, right? So the idea in Marvel Comics is you have a guy by the name of Cthone. The nature of Cthone is that he's what's called an Elder God, and Cthone was a Elder God who occupied Earth before the purging of the Elder Gods happened. And so when that purge happened, and you basically had all these different Elder Gods being eliminated and destroyed, that Cthone, and don't get this wrong, he was evil, he was a terrible guy, but Cthone took all of his knowledge of dark magic, and he he wrote it down on basically pieces of flesh, right? Human flesh, which is pretty messed up and pretty gruesome when you think about it. Um, about 30,000 years before the present day, a woman named Morgan Le Fay took those pieces of flesh and then just copied all the text down into a book, which became known as the Darkhold. But the whole point behind this is that Cthone is super powerful. Now, this is where things get crazy. In Marvel Comics, it was prophesied that somebody out there would be born with the ability, the inherent ability to manipulate chaos magic. Now for Scarlet Witch, it was not necessarily inherent. When she was born into the world, she was touched by Cthone, who basically granted her a portion of his power. But the reason why that happened is because according to the prophecy, that individual who's able to wield chaos magic will in turn serve as a vector by which Cthone can leave his plane of existence and enter into the earthly realm, basically into the universe and then conquer it, right? Or do whatever it is that he ends up, you know, intends to do. And that's what it looks like is happening with Wanda. But that's assuming the Marvel Cinematic Universe wants to go in that direction. Something to understand here is that the MCU is based on basically three types of Marvel franchises, right? You have the Ultimate Universe, which was launched in 2000, and that was the answer to the question, what would happen or what would it look like if superheroes existed like right now, if they came into existence right now at the time that series was launched? Then you have Earth-98, which is a universe in Marvel Comics where superheroes age in real time. And then you have the Marvel, main Marvel Universe where almost all the Marvel stories you've ever read have been told. And so because of that, a lot of things get shifted around, right? It's kind of the nature of the Marvel rule, right? You got Occam's Razor, you've got Hanlon's Law, you got Murphy 
Murphy's Law, all that kind of stuff. You got the MCU rule, right? The simplest plot tends to be the right one. And so because of that, it's one of these things where it could be, it could be something as simple as the idea that the term chaos magic is not necessarily designed to illustrate that Wanda is using chaos magic, which inherently belongs to Cthone. And she's going to serve as a means by which Cthone can leave his realm and show up on Earth. And simply, it may just be an indication that like chaos magic just manifests in random ways. And it's just kind of weird and wonky and, and kind of crazy. And that's basically it. Given the severity of the situation and given, given how much knowledge of magic Agatha seems to have over the course of the last 300 some odd years that she's been alive, I would lean more towards the idea that Wanda is absurdly powerful in wielding chaos magic. But the question is, what can she do with this? All right, here's the thing to understand. The ability to wield chaos magic is basically a limitless source of energy. What you've seen Wanda do in WandaVision isn't even the beginning of the tip of the iceberg. She can alter the very fabric of the universe itself, right? We saw the full totality of what Wanda could do during the events of House of M. And this is why things are significant, right? We saw the full totality of what she could do in the events of House of M when you basically had Wanda taking away 98% of the mutant population's powers. But the reason why that mattered is because in a future story, it was revealed she did it across the entirety of the multiverse, not just her own native universe. And that's why Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, that's why the events of WandaVision all basically seem to tie together. That if Wanda, if, if all this pops off and, and whatever this ending happens to take, right? Something bad happens, her kids are like destroyed or her kids were never real and Wanda just freaked, right? Because I have to believe, given what we've seen so far, right? Wanda was pushed to her breaking point after losing her parents and after losing her brother and then after losing Vision. That's how we got from point A to point B and that the way her powers were bolstered and she's just been using chaos magic ever since. Then in turn, like she loses her kids or maybe like Stephen Strange, right? Stephen Strange shows up at the end of the series and is like, Wanda, your kids aren't real, right? Like none of this is real. Like when you have that, that what is it? That line from Vision and the various TV spots we've seen where it's like, well, this is our world. Let's fight for it. And so like Wanda fights for it. She defeats Agatha Harkness. The day saves. She gets to continue living the life that she always wanted to live. And then here comes Stephen Strange. Wanda, this has to stop. And she's like, enough is enough, right? And she just fully lets loose of her chaos magic. And then it just kind of permeates and goes nuts. Maybe Cthone shows up, who knows? But whatever it is, it'll go into Wanda, I think being the main villain in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, right? I think this is how Wanda becomes the bad guy. I think either she gets completely and totally corrupted by her power. She's possessed by Cthone in his entirety, assuming he exists, right? I mean, that's one of the things the Ancient One pointed out in Doctor Strange, right? She said like, there have been countless, there are countless threats out there, right? There are countless threats that exist out there. And if I told you all the different horrors that existed, you'd go running screaming from this place, right? So it stands to reason to believe that like Cthone does exist out there, right? And maybe at some point along the line, he was defeated and locked away by the Ancient One, whatever the case is, but this allows him to basically return, possesses Wanda, goes forward in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, and Wanda's the bad guy. That's my kind of thought on this. But again, like this episode was really more about the backstory of Wanda, right? It was more about answering the question, how did we get from a girl who can read minds and move objects with her mind to a girl that could like alter reality, even if only in a localized space, and then completely restructure matter. But the big takeaway from this and the sense that she can use chaos magic is the powers of Wanda are limitless. There is no finite limit to what she can do. Presumably, she can kill and take over anybody, right? She's way beyond Doctor Strange at this point, right? Like she's so far beyond Doctor Strange, it's not even funny. It's kind of nuts. I would surmise probably in the multiverse of madness, you might even see the living tribunal pop up that Wanda creates an inherent imbalance of magical energy inside her own universe and across the multiverse. And the living tribunal basically says, nope, because of that, like I exist to safeguard balance across the multiverse. You are creating an imbalance in that multiverse. Gotta go. And then that's the end of Wanda, right? Because if you think she's powerful, she's got nothing on the living tribunal. Even if she is manipulating chaos magic, the living tribunal, this is a guy who could just snap his fingers and Wanda just ceases to exist, right? I mean, this the power of the living tribunal is insane. I really hope we get to see him in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't know if that'll happen, but if we do, it would be amazing. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you guys want to see more of our theories and discussions on WandaVision, make sure you hit the playlist and make sure you check out Comics Explained for my videos on Agatha Hartness Explained, uh, Nightmare Explained, The Dark Hold Explained, all that kind of stuff. And I guess now I should probably make a video on like Chaos Magic Explained. So anyway, guys, we're going to bring this to an end and I will catch you all later. Peace.